Now let's look at uh, social media uh, privacy, particularly looking at social uh, privacy offline and online, connecting offline and online privacy. This is one of very popular uh, work uh, done by Alessandro and Ralph, uh, which is looking at information uh, flow on social networks and looking at the offline uh, way that people behave also. And please keep in mind these are these are phenomenal work, uh, yeah, like a decade or a, this this I think is 2004 or 2005 paper. Uh, so keep yeah this is WPS 2005. Keep that in mind while we're thinking. These kind of work are influential, but these kind of work you should also keep the context in mind uh, and when this should have been done. And I'm, all of these studies can be repeated now. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you think about it, these kind of studies can be repeated now to study how privacy uh, is, what people think of privacy now. I'll go through uh, this paper in detail a little bit to give you a sense of connecting this offline and online, what interesting questions can be asked. Again, I'm assuming that you will also think of some ideas. As I said in... Um, week one, it will be really, really nice if some of you actually take up some interesting projects uh, as part of this course, uh, do some data collection, do some analysis, do some uh, system building and, and see how it, how it works. It's not part of the evaluation, but I think it will be fun for you. Uh, in 2000, uh, so this is again giving you some numbers, right, giving you some numbers about what the how uh, the status at that point was and I, I've added some 2015 numbers I'm sure you can add some numbers even re more recently. In, in 2000, 100 billion photographs uh, were shot worldwide. In 2010, 2.5 billion photos per month were uploaded on Facebook. In 2015, 1.8 billion photos were uploaded every day on Facebook and stuff like uh, Snapchat and WhatsApp, right? So those are huge numbers, right? Photos are getting uploaded everywhere. I'm sure uh, from uh, from the week one until now, uh, in the last 15 days, I'm sure many of you would have uploaded many pictures on these platforms. I'm sure you would see me only uploading uh, pictures as part of this class itself, right? Please, again, if, if you think that there are interesting pictures that you, uh, you, you can take, which is you listening to my lecture, uh, share it with me. I'm happy to post it on social media again it's part of the class right it's part of the class studying how much information can be uh, found and and uh, understanding this whole mechanism of sharing these pictures and looking at what's going on and for me I think as, as if, if you have started following me by now on any of these platforms I actually upload a lot of this I contribute to this uh, 1.8 billion pictures that are uploaded on uh, these platforms and all companies like Facebook Microsoft Google Apple have a, uh, Amazon I think you can you can add the list of Amazon also here all of them have actually uh, uh, acquired companies which does face recognition because it is part of their uh, solution now, right? Uh, meaning if you use uh, products uh, where it, uh, I mean, phone unlocks now because it's actually looking at your phone uh, face through the camera and it's actually saying that's face recognition solution, right? So that's a manufacturing of phone is actually using these products now. And, and from the privacy standpoint, it's actually interesting that many things are coming together. One is this uploading of uh, uh, pictures that are increasing, but it's also that uh, public self-disclosure through online social media. Uh, we are uploading pictures, but we're also giving away more information than just pictures. Right? You're saying where the picture was taken, who you are with, all that photos, location, daily life uh, details. All of that is being uploaded. Like for example, I think I uploaded a picture uh, uh, when I started my first lecture recording. I'm hoping that I'll do the last lecture recording also uh, by uh, taking a picture. Improving accuracy in face recognition is increasing. Uploading of pictures, information with that picture is increasing. Recognizing the objects in the images are also increasing. 
Okay, again, thanks to lots of uh, computer vision solutions, which is helping these things happen better. The ubiquitous computing part, right, which is only available devices, everything is also increasing um, uh, day by day. VR yeah. identification techniques are also getting better, which is if you if you have uh, the one that I said earlier, if you have CS Prof as an account on on Reddit, can you actually de-identify the CS Prof? The techniques are getting better, and you have a picture in which uh, PK is there. Can you identify picture PK in that picture when that picture does not, uh, so to say, explicitly state that PK is in that picture? Right. So those are the things that you can actually uh, get better now in over the years. The technologies have become better to address this. Information being uploaded, pictures being uploaded, information attached to it, um, the the face recognition and technologies for that has improved. Basically, cloud service providers and information that you can put it on cloud and keep it there for as many as long as you want has increased. De-identification has also increased. Right. So keeping all this in mind is what they they started asking a question. They started asking the question that can one combine publicly available information, which is on social network data, with offline, right, with off-the-shelf face recognition technology for individual re-identification, which is you take the um, a Facebook post which has PK in it, but PK nobody say PK is not tagged in the picture, but you are uploading the picture, and uh, you uh, can you re-identify PK in that picture? Individual re-identification find potentially sensitive information also. Can you identify that uh, PK is actually in a location where he is not supposed to be? or PK is with people whom he is not supposed to be with, or PK said that he is doing A, but you have picture to show that he is doing B, all of that, right? All of these are very interesting questions that uh, come up uh, as, uh, you, as, as these pictures can be used for analysis. We've actually seen some interesting examples of these also. For example, uh, matrimonial websites, right? Matrimonial websites has these uh, interesting feature because their people say what they want people to know about them, right? I think you, you can argue for the uh, you can argue for the face uh, social media itself like that. In matrimonial, it's a little serious about getting getting relationships built there, right? So there's a feature uh, alcoholic. Meaning there are features like salary, all of that, right? Gender, all this is there. But one of the features that uh, we found interesting at some point in time was alcoholic. Lots of people would say that I'm non-alcoholic, right? They would put uh, non-alcoholic for probably a better impression. I guess it's all about impression management, right? When we saw, when we analyzed some of these matrimonial websites, we found that again all of this is publicly available. We found that people who say non-alcoholic on a matrimonial websites, you look at their Facebook or a Twitter post, they would actually be in a pub, in a in a um, uh, in a uh, they would have uploaded a picture where it shows that they are actually consuming alcohol. Interesting, right? Interesting, which is which is what am I trying to do is connecting to this question, which is take up a, a social media information, which is somebody posted a picture on Twitter in a, in a pub or a bar. Can you take that picture and use this other information, in this case matrimonial website, to re-identify this person saying that it's actually PK, uh, he, he, he or she is from this location. Interesting question, right? Interesting uh, a connection you can make, and and we found some interesting patterns out of, after this also. Okay, goal: use unidentified source. Again, the goal was online, offline. So use unidentified source, which is MatchMe.com, uh, photos from Flickr, CCTVs, etc., and 
plus identified sources like Facebook, LinkedIn, government websites, etc. Right? Matchme.com, matrimonial website, any matrimonial website you can take, Flickr pictures uploaded. We are not identified there. Whereas in Facebook, you can upload, if I upload a picture, there's a high chance that I'm going to be on the picture. And if I tag you, you there is there's a high chance that you are also on that picture. That's the identified source and the non-identified, unidentified source. That's the difference of these two data sets. Get some sensitive information of individual uh, using this information itself, gender orientation, social security number, other number. Can you actually derive all this information from this online and offline source? So those are the goals for the study that they had in mind. One is to uh, put the unidentified source with the identified source. With that, can they actually find out some sensitive information of individuals? Okay. Let's continue looking at the study. So. One of the concepts that we will also, as I said before, we will delve more in detail later in the semester is this whole idea for re-identification, anonymity techniques, all that. So this is one work that became very popular because of which the idea of re-identification or anonymity also became very, very important. So this was work done by Lathania Sweeney at MIT. And uh, what she did was she basically took medical records right, and voter list, put them together, and then found that just the zip, birth date, and gender will actually be useful in re identifying people in the US. Right. So, this may look slightly trivial now. But this is this was the first time it was done, so it was actually a phenomenal piece of work uh, in nineties, uh, where where she looked at uh, putting these two data together and then re-identifying uh, people, and particularly she also re-identified some politicians uh, with their with uh, given their um, finding their medical records from this. Uh, uh, medical data was actually super uh, super cool at that point in time. There are many techniques that has been built on this idea called anonymity, which is to uh, protect the data when it is shared, and people cannot any nobody can actually re-identify uh, people in the data set. So the idea called k-anonymity, which is done by uh, Lathania, then there was idea L diversity, T closeness, and now uh, differential privacy is one of the very popular techniques uh, by which anonymity is provided. I'm sure if you're using the Apple phones, if you're uh, uh, using tools which uh, as uh, uh, differential privacy, and these days many tools are actually applying uh, differential privacy in their, uh, in their features. We will look at this more detail later in the semester, just focusing only on what they are, how to technically uh, achieve them. So what was Alessandro and Ralph trying to do? Their first experiment was to trying to connect online and online. What is that goal? Uh, mind publicly available images from Facebook to re-identify uh, profiles on one of the most popular dating websites. If you remember I said dating websites is match.com, you can think of it as Jeevan, uh, jeevansathi.com, any of those kind of websites you could actually uh, think as one of the source. What they did, they found these images, right? So they wanted to figure out who is that in the uh, image. So they used this uh, tool called pitpad.com. Now it's acquired by Google, but the idea is to uh, face detection. And when, when there's an image, uh, if there's a face, uh, the method would actually find out where the face is. And if there is a face, can it actually find it? But who was it in the picture also? Meaning now I'm, I'm sure you, you are uh, uh, more skillful in terms of identifying these kind of things. Many of them have become very popular tools uh, which you can just give as input as images and output as faces in the 
pictures. The data that they had was uh, so so again. Remember, identified and unidentified data, identified sources. Uh, the data that they had is downloaded Facebook profiles from one city in the U.S. Profiles uh, they had profiles of two hundred and seventy thousand, and images is two hundred and seventy four thousand, and faces detected was about one hundred and ten thousand. So this is the identified source because it's Facebook because Punarangam Kumaraguru is uploading the pictures and it is taken from my profile. So, you can actually identify that uh, PK is in this picture or not. Today, this may be a little hard to do because I think collecting this data from Facebook may be a little harder. You have to do much more than what they did uh, during, during 2004, 2005 when they could actually easily collect, give a input as a city and get the output as a profiles from that city. But as today, you have to build an app, get uh, get a lot more uh, approval from the users who are using these uh, solutions for their data to be collected. That's identified. Now, looking at the unidentified data, unidentified data is this matrimonial website, right? Uh, uh, Sathi.com or matrimonial.com. I could actually create a profile in whatever name I want. And now that is unidentified, that's the data that they collected. Downloaded profiles on one of the popular dating websites, pseudonymous to protect their identities, which people use. I think earlier, uh, one of the classes I said CS prof as a, as a pseudonymous identifier for me, which could be possible. And photo can be used to identify photo from the Facebook profile. Uh, same city was used to search. Uh, given that they did a search for one, one city in the US, they used the same city uh, for data collection here. Why? They wanted to make the comparison. Uh, they wanted to merge the data, right? So, they picked the data from uh, Hyderabad and if they picked the data from Chennai, the day of meaning there's high chance that you're going to find me in Chennai's data. Whereas if you find the Facebook profiles from Chennai and uh, uh, the, the matrimonial website from Chennai, there are high chances that you will find me in both the data. And the profiles that they collected were about 5,818 and faces detected were about close to 5,000 uh, 5, photos, right? You can clearly see that's the data that they're going to play around with. Photos here, faces here. So, what was their experiment one? Experiment one was connecting this unidentified source, which is the dating web websites, to the identified source, which is this Facebook profiles, uh, to re identify people. I'm sure you're already guessed it, right? I'm, putting these two together, we should be able to find out who the CS prof in the matrimonial website is from the Facebook profile that you have actually got of mine. More than 500 million compared, so you have to compare this 100,000 pictures with the 5,000 pictures from these both uh, sources. Uh, used only the best match uh, matching pair for each dating site picture. So, the idea is that they wanted to get the uh, so to say um, the match should have been the maximum, right? That's when you can actually argue that look, these two are the same people. I mean, I'm sure you can do many different algorithms to figure out uh, uh, whether this person is same or not, but they ended up. Uh, making this choice of uh, best matching pair. Pitpad produces a course of uh, score of minus 1.5 to 20 and then they also had the mTurkers which is mechanical Turk uh, platform where you actually show these images that they have found out that this is same PK from matrimonial com, matrimonial uh, dot com and PK from Facebook. They showed these two pictures. Let's take I do an exercise with all the class uh, students uh, in the class. I get you to actually say click on it saying okay is this the same person or no? Is this the same person or no? I, I show you 50 pictures and I get you tag it. And similarly I saw the same 50 pictures to 55 other people. All of them will actually tag it and accordingly I can actually make a choice that whether it is same person or not, right? 
this method is actually very common annotation and getting um, uh, real people to actually do this task uh, which will help the results that you have have more confidence in it now that people are actually doing it it's not just a algorithm that is doing it people have confirmed it what the algorithm found and they did a, a Likert scale of 1 to 5, which is matching, uh, whether it is matching fully, whether it is matching partially, or whether it's not matching, that's the uh, results that they got. So why is this better? Because see, otherwise, if you were to do go and do all the 500 million by the m turkers it's going to it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of money. Instead, run it by an algorithm, reduce that number to a smaller size, and then actually show it to users. By that way, you are actually uh, reducing the time, reducing the cost, and probably making the results better also. Uh, at least five talkers for each pair. Uh, so this is what I said. I, I would take 50 images and get five of you to actually uh, and it did the same picture. Therefore, I have more confidence again. If five people agree that it's the same uh, person or it is not the same person, there is actually chances that it is not the same person. It's not all five people agree. Let's take if three people uh, agree that it's the same person, again, just making my confidence level uh, higher is what all of this is about getting more people to annotate, uh, getting actually people to annotate also in addition to the algorithms that have found it. Um, experiment one results, what did they find? They found that highly likely matches is about 6.3%. When users m is actually matched, it was about 6.3%. Highly likely plus likely. This is this is happening because of the five point Likert scale, one to five, right? Highly likely, likely matches neutral. Highly unlike, uh, unlikely, and then uh, highly unlikely matches. Right? So this is um, uh, ten point five percent, which means. 1 in 10 from the dating website was actually re-identified. Just imagine, right, just from one city, uh, data was collected and uh, they could actually identify 1 in 10 percent of the people re-identification. Right. So therefore, it's actually, meaning as you think about it, think about ways by which uh, you can actually do this in India also and try some small experiments that you can do it. So if you think about the methods that we just saw, which is just taking images, putting them together, figuring out whether they're the same person through an algorithm, and then using an m uh, to to confirm it, I mean, if you are the attacker, right, attacker in terms of actually finding either in, in one side, can you actually do things that it will not be re-identified, right? So that I as a user, I as PK, I want to put the pictures on matrimonial website and on Facebook, but I don't want people to actually connect them together. Versus on the other side, I want to put pictures together and I want people to re-identify that it's the same person, right? So that's the uh, that's the spectrum that that generally comes into discussion about uh, where a user completely wants anonymity, which is I don't want to be re-identified. Uh, this let's take is hundred percent anonymity, and this is zero percent anonymity, which is like just connect me, I'm okay. Even though if I have a, a handle says uh, uh, Punguru and CS Prof. I would like you to, I would like an algorithm to actually figure out that it's actually the same PK. That's here. All decisions, all technologies, all platforms that we build, keeping this anonymity in mind will fall into this spectrum. Okay. They did experiment two. What they tried? They tried offline to online which is collect data somewhere in the offline mode and c 
and then uh, link it to the data that is provided that is available in the online mode. Uh, pictures from Facebook college network to identify students strolling on the campus. So, they took one campus, they collected data from um, that particular campus Facebook profiles. Again, this may not be possible now because of all restrictions on Facebook, uh, but, but during those days it was possible, which is find uh, search a particular campus and then you can get all the profiles from that particular campus. So, they had uh, um, were, were, for the offline thing what they did was they just set up a small webcam on the campus um, and then for two days and they just took pictures of people walking around on campus. They took three pictures of a particular participants. Of course, it was all done IRB approved everything. Uh, so, the user were consented into doing the study and three pictures were taken about. So, let us let's assume that I am I am a student of this campus, I walk around uh, and then the uh, study administrator stop me and then say would you be would you be willing to participate in the study. Uh, if so, they would take three pictures of the three pictures of mine uh, and and use it for the data, use it for the analysis. Facebook data for the university that they collected profiles is about 25,000, images is about 26,000 and about 11,000 faces were detected. It looks like they had a lot of uh, faces in images, right? 26,000 images with 114,000 faces. That is the data uh, experiment too. Pictures taken of individuals walking in the campus asked to fill an online survey. Uh, so, while um, uh, pictures pictures of these three people were taken and then the participants were asked to uh, fill a survey, pictures matched from the cloud which is when they were filling the survey there was matching done between the pictures that were taken to the pictures that they had already connected from Facebook. I will show an image where everything is in probably like an architecture diagram which will walk you through the process. Uh, pictures matched from the cloud while they were filling the survey and last page of the survey were the options of the pictures which is by the time they finished the survey they could actually do the comparison and bring it back and show it in the last page saying look these are the pictures that we got from Facebook. Uh, uh, comparing the pictures that you just showed uh, that we just took yours. Asked to select the pictures which match closely produced by the recognizer. Yeah, so that is the flow of the experiment which is uh, uh, starting here upload three pictures, uh, upload three pictures of uh, uh, the user and uh, uh, compare it with the server and then when compared with the server bring bring it back generate the survey token and uh, uh, survey meaning the user is filling the survey by that time they would uh, compare and then by the comparison. So, that is the architecture diagram that I was uh, referring to. Uh, what they do is they get the user to uh, take a picture of, of the user, they upload it from the users, uh, I meaning they take the picture of the user, upload it to the server, uh, do the comparison, uh, face recognition results are showing up here and then they are filling the survey, customer, uh, custom survey that they are filling, the results for the survey is given to the given back. Uh, so, this is the experiment uh, subject, this is the supervisor. So, essentially the supervisor is the one who is taking the picture, uploading the picture, getting the comparison and and if you see this, 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 this is me doing the study. Right. So, essentially it is it's simple taking my pictures, uploading it to a server, doing the comparison, asking me to fill the survey and then showing the pictures again to me. 98 participants, all all students had uh, Facebook account, 38 percent of the participants were matched with the correct Facebook profile, which is the correctness is coming from, I am I'm being asked to mark saying is this me from the picture, right, that is the, uh, the last part of the study. Uh, including a participant who mentioned that he did not have a picture on Facebook, right. 
So, that is the idea of uh, shadow profiles uh, which which I think in one of the videos that uh, I asked you to see you must have heard about a shadow profile which is the, the social media platforms having information about users when they are not even on the platform that is the shadow profile which is let us take some of you are not on Instagram and uh, but Insta actually has information about you when you show up in their uh, platform they would actually use that for recommendations use that for other purposes that's that that idea is called shadow profile uh, in this case there was a one participant in the study who said that he's never uploaded a picture on Facebook but he was actually uh, the, there was a picture which the researchers found uh, that he was in the picture average computation is just to show the computational side of it lit three seconds um, so, this is one I mean I have kind of anonymized the picture the idea is that they took this is the picture this is the kind of picture that they would actually they were actually taking uh, uh, in the study uh, asking a participant and they used this picture to find out this person was actually in a, in a group picture from Facebook. This is the study picture while the study three pictures that they took. And it is, this is the picture from uh, Facebook that they found of the user. Right. So, that is the kind of input and output that, that was there in the study. Uh, Ralph and Alessandro did not just stop here, right? They wanted to actually use this to do something more interesting, which is on the social security. Uh, numbers. So, the uh, TED talk that I asked you to watch last week which is by Alessandro should have uh, I mean should have given you an idea of what the um, uh, social security number study that Alessandro has been doing for quite some time in trying to re-identify people uh, their their social security numbers. What did they do? They uh, predicted social security number from public data. This is another paper by itself, but it's an extension of the work that Ralph and Alessandro did, uh, as in the other uh, three-part study. The faces, uh, Facebook data, uh, plus the public data. This is what they used. They they had all this information, right? Faces, Facebook data that they had collected just now in the experiment too. And then the public data they could actually collect from anywhere on the internet and then um, predict the social security number. So, what the, so this is for, for those of you uh, who do not know what a social security number is, it is this uh, digits, digits numbers that are given to uh, US citizens uh, like our other number. Right. So, it is very, very meaning our I think our other uh, idea, UID idea uh, spun out of many of these uh, national ID numbers across the world, one of it is social security number in the US. 27 percent of subjects first five uh, SSN digits identified with four attempts. Uh, starting from their faces, which is from so the simple idea is that from the faces they were able to identify some digits of the social security number. Why is this some digits interesting? Is because the 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 way that the social security number is given, the, the for example, if you see it's a three digit here, two digit here, and then the four digit. This digits itself, the way it is placed itself was actually giving you some information which is where I was born, which city I was born and uh, uh, during which time I would have I, I was born. All that was embedded in this in this number which is what uh, was making it slightly easier and which is what if, if you were able to find out then you could actually re-identify social security number of people right. right. Predicted sensitive information like social security number, uh, they actually use this for predicting. So, here is a paper, we will not get into details of uh, full details of this paper, but here is the uh, paper uh, which actually looked at uh, this which is predicting social security numbers from public data. 
they went and argued that look we could actually figure out uh, social security numbers because of because of various reasons uh, which is when the number could have been given uh, given the number you could actually predict over oh, this number might have been given in this period and therefore this person would have been born uh, around this period all these kinds of predictions they were trying to do and with with uh, with the data that was publicly only available right so that's the that's the cool part of about it that uh, they they used only the publicly available information uh, to predict the social security number so so yeah please take a look at the paper if you're interested and if there is any questions feel free to post it on the mailing list i'll be happy to take it there so that was about using social data for uh, predicting so um, predicting some sensitive information so as i said every week i'll get you to watch uh, uh, some videos uh, ted talks documentaries all that for this uh, uh, week so so i'll i'll try and mark it as mandatory some and i'll try and mark some as optional because i think uh, for 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 uh, documentaries on Netflix and all. I don't know whether to make it mandatory, but I but I'm sure you as um, all of you may have a Netflix or a Prime Video account. Uh, but but try and watch it even if it's optional. So this one is actually an interview. Uh, um, Trevor Noah and uh, uh, Edward Snowden. Uh, I don't know how many of you have read the book Permanent Record. Um, but but this this interview would give you an insight. This is a very recent interview, also uh, would give you a good insight on uh, uh, how how uh, Edward has been thinking about this idea called Mars surveillance, and what are the things that he thinks uh, would 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 help uh, in in setting about what are the complications that is going on uh, in terms of uh, whistleblowing. Uh, within the garment that he did. Uh, this is a optional one, uh, just as, just because it's a, I, I think this documentary is on Netflix, but this will build on. Meaning, if you watch the uh, interview and this uh, documentary, will give you a good sense of what happened and what what is the current state of uh, Edward uh, in terms of uh, his activities. So this is a documentary which talks about what he did within the government and whistleblowing, all of that. Uh, what do I want? What, what what do I want you to submit when you watch both this both these videos? Is uh, privacy concerns that the documentary highlights or the view uh, video highlights? Uh, think you learned things that you learned, small or big. Uh, that you never uh, knew about, right? There must be something that is showing up in these videos, uh, which that uh, you did not know before. I think he would talk about mass surveillance. He would talk about uh, legal rights that citizens have in terms of uh, protecting yourself if you were to become a whistleblower. Uh, things you can do to help broader audience uh, be aware. So one of the idea for me to get you to watch these videos uh, is that uh, meaning I think these would give you a good sense of what the problem is. But I think we should also think about what are the methods to tell others about this problem, right? Can you can you actually think of uh, awareness creation of these topics? Uh, to others, because I think more people understand these kind of ideas, more surveillance, privacy, uh, anonymity, all that. I think the general usage, uh, digital literacy would increase, and in the process, I think our all of our experiences on using these tools uh, will also increase, which is actually pretty low in India to start with. So what did we cover this week, right? This week we covered uh, privacy enhancing technologies, uh, looking at uh, um, meaning what are the methods by which you can actually increase uh, the privacy, uh, some tools like P3P, Privacy Bird, Privacy Finder, uh, some of TAR, all of that we saw. 
privacy invasive technologies, we talked about RFID tags, uh, we talked about methods, advertising, we talked about tracking, all of that. Uh, some of these topics will come back again later in the semester, but for now we, we just understood what the topic is. Uh, privacy decision making, looking at uh, P3P again uh, as an example. Social media privacy is a big topic for this class, uh, but we just saw one study where, where they used the uh, publicly available information and this idea for online and offline. Uh, putting them together and creating a, a user profile, particularly re-identifying social security numbers and re-identifying people using pictures. So that was uh, week uh, three and uh, please again use the mailing list effectively to uh, talk about the topics. Any questions about the lectures feel free to uh, ask. Uh, we would also do these uh, online uh, sessions um, again uh, to to just make you feel comfortable with the topic and actually also bring up uh, some other topics that you may be interested in and uh, uh, some other topics that you may be interested in. Yeah. Uh, thanks again for watching the lecture. See you soon on week four.